There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. So it's goodbye again. Yes. We should be used to goodbyes by now. You'd think, wouldn't you? You know, I used to think when I was a little boy back in America. You used to think what, Tony? Well, it doesn't matter. Of course it does. I love to hear you talk about when you were a little boy. But you know something funny? I'm, well, I'm jealous. Jealous? Jealous of what? I'm jealous of those years. I'm jealous that you grew up and I didn't get to know you because we hadn't met so many years. And I think now, what a waste that we didn't know one another then. We had time once, didn't we? All the time we needed, but not now. Now there is no time, Tony. Now there is only time for goodbyes. Now people fly by so fast, you want to call out to them. And then it's too late. They've gone. They've disappeared. It's time to take off, Lieutenant. The Luftwaffe is coming. I'm on my way. But, sir, the troops are moving out. Thank you, Private. Oh, my darling. Tony, Tony sweetheart. sweetheart. Now, now, you must go. You must go. I am a of you for my eyes and a thought, thought of you, you to hold in my mind. for my mind. As do I. And I a touch of you for all of me. Oh, my darling. I won't forget you. Not, not forever, forever and a day. And a day. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, where are you now? Where? Picture of a woman looking at a picture. Her features alive to everything that appears on the screen. Her lips move and her eyes flash, mirroring every expression, every emotion. The features are exquisite, beautifully chiseled and proportioned. And even in the flickering light, she is easy to recognize. Like the face on the screen, this is Barbara Jean Trenton. Movie grade of another era. Once brilliant star and a firmament no longer a part of the sky, eclipsed by the movement of the earth and time. Barbara Jean Trenton, whose world has become a projection room in her home, whose dreams are made of celluloid, struck down by hit and run years and lying on the pavement, trying desperately to get the license number of fleeting fame. Somewhere on a side street, in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, The 16 Millimeter Shrine, starring Kathy Garver with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Miss Trenton? Miss Trenton? Miss... What is it, Sally? Oh, I didn't see you standing there. It's so dark in this room. Would you like me to open the drape? No, thank you. What is it that you want? I brought you your... I brought you a snack, Miss Trenton. You always used to have snack this time of day. Just put it down on the table. Yes, miss. If you don't mind my saying so, you really should have something to eat. I do mind. That will be all, Sally. Yes, Miss Trenton. I'll be going now. You do that. Will you be wanting lunch this afternoon? I'll be glad to make you a I'll nice... I'll let you know. Very well, Miss. Oh, Miss... 
Mr. Weiss. How are you, Sally? Perfectly fine. In the den, is she? Yes, sir. Mr. Weiss. Yes? I'm worried about her. I'm worried that... Well, you see... I'll see how she's doing. But you don't understand, Mr. Weiss. It's getting worse, much worse. I go in there and... And? There have been times when I've gone in and I could almost swear that... What could you swear to, Sally? That sometimes she... Well, she's not in the room at all. She's up on the screen. But she is, isn't she? I, you know, those old films she's watching are her films, right? I do, yes. But I take your point. She's been in there too much, and it's disturbing you. Well, that's, that's perfectly understandable. I tell you what. Let me talk to her. Would you? Yeah, just give me a minute. Of course, sir. Barb! Fix yourself a drink, Danny. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning. So, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. What about it? It's 11 in the morning and the sun is out, see? Oh, why did you have to do that? It's a beautiful day in Beverly Hills. There's no smog, it's 84 degrees, and it's lovely out there. What would I do without your daily meteorological reports? The question is, what do you do with them? You sit here in this, this air-conditioned cave, showing one picture after another. <laughs> Why? Haven't you seen them enough times? Let's skip that. Barbie. No good, honey. What isn't? None of this is any good. If you won't fix yourself a drink, then sit down and be quiet. You have a habit of looking poised, ready to spring. What was the picture? Two of them. Farewell without tears. Now, let's see. 26 years ago, co-starring Jerry Herndon. Of course, co-starring Jerry. He was my favorite leading man. And then, a night in Paris. 25 years ago. I know it was 25 years are you father time now? Barbie. Danny, should I have failed to make mention of this before? I hate clinical tiptoeing. If you don't like what I do, don't knock it. I have to knock what you do. And I have to get clinical when I see you enclose yourself in this room and stop the clock. You said things back 15, 20, 25 years. You turn your back on today. And you do this every day. Let me tell you something, honey. That's sick. It's, that's real sick. Is that all? No, it isn't all. I got some news to deliver. What now? I set up an appointment for you over at International. You did? At International? Mm-hmm. When? Today. A part? Sounds like a good one. Is uh, Marty Saul still running the studio? Sure is. Hmm, too bad. I never got along with Marty. Yeah, I remember. But he's older now. I, I think you'll find he's mellowed. He said I was the most temperamental star he'd ever worked with. Now, why would he say a thing like that? Danny, you know something. You're a nice guy. A very nice guy. A loyal friend and a good agent after all. I guess in my own devious, selfish way, I happen to be very much in love with you. Wait, wait, wait. Calm down now, Barbie. Oh, I hope it's a musical. I'd love to dance again. Or a juicy romantic role, like the scenes I watched this morning with Jerry Herndon. See his photograph here? Yes, yes, I see it. I did three pictures with him. I know. Oh, mon capitaine, tell me about your country of America. A night in Paris, remember? Jerry was a young American lieutenant. I was Claudette, the little French girl. Age 19. Go to the devil, Danny. Barbara Jean, it's a beautiful day today. The sun is shining, and it's a brand new world. A new world, get it? It's 25 years away from a night in Paris, and 26 years away from a farewell without tears. 
This room is dark and cold and full of cobwebs. Now get up and go outside, honey. You'll be surprised at what you see. Huh? Pleasantly surprised, I promise. And don't you dare let me catch you looking no photographs on the wall anymore, or in the mirror either. Now, I'll meet you in Saul's office at three o'clock. Do, do we understand each other? We do. Good. In fact, it's more than good. <laughs> it's absolutely, positively great. Danny? Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, well, don't thank me yet. Just be there. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Am I still the fairest of them all? Yeah. Mr. Weiss, sir, and Miss Trenton? Sign them in. Marty, there you are. Hmm. Good to see you, Barbara. You're looking... Uh... What, Marty? Spectacular? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Don't be afraid to say it. Any woman appreciates a compliment, as long as it's sincere. New dress, huh? New hat, flowers even. Veil, the whole schmear. You going somewhere? Why, no, Marty. It's all for you. I believe you know my agent, Mr. Weiss. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Danny? Fine. And yourself? Sit down, please. My, you've redone your office. Did he tell you about the part? Uh, not exactly. I think it fits you. It's not big, but it'll be a nice showcase. How big and how much of a showcase? I meant to tell you, Barbara. It's, uh, it's not the lead, more like a, a special cameo appearance. No, very special. Surely Danny's told you what my requirements are. Mm-hmm. Why is it, Barbara, you and I always get off on the wrong foot? And what foot is that? The one in your mouth? Oh, excuse me, that's a cigar. Still smoking those nasty things, I see. We always seem to fight. Doesn't that always seem to be the case? We begin by fighting. I'm still waiting to hear about the part, Marty. Raise the veil. What? On your hat. Go ahead. That's it. Uh-huh. Perfect. What do you mean? You play a mother. How old a mother? No, that's not the point, Barbara. Forty-ish, but very vibrant, very alive. As opposed to what? A corpse? I don't play mothers, Mr. Saul. I never have, and I'm not about to start now. I also don't take bit roles, even if you call them cameos. You should know that. You'll forgive me, my dear, but I didn't realize you were still so particular. Well, now you do. At least I would think you'd look at the part. That would be a waste of my time. Look, I think we could at least take the script home with us, Barbie. You take the script home with you, and you play it. I didn't like this crude, tasteless man when I was under contract to him, and I don't like him anymore now. And especially when he offers me a fast walk-on. And you, Miss... Miss Prima Donna, you... I got news for you. You may think you're still the number one lady on top of the heap, but you got it wrong. You're just an aging broad with a scrapbook. And any part you get at this studio won't have to go through an agent. You can set it up with a community chest, because it'll be charity. Barbara, wait. <sighs> Remind me someday, Saul. Remind me when you've gone over the hill and you're down on your hands and knees. Remind me to give you a swift kick. Just so you'll know how it feels. Oh, Miss Trenton. And Mr. Weiss, I didn't expect you back so soon. That will be all, Sally. Yes, miss. You'll excuse me, Danny. I'm going upstairs to rest. Don't you think we have a couple of things to talk about? Not now. I'm feeling tired. Barbie! What? You're right about him, Barbie. He's a tasteless man. He's got a mean temper and a dirty little mouth. You shouldn't pay any attention to him. Are you talking about Saul? 
Saul doesn't exist. That studio doesn't exist. Not anymore. Not the way it is now. Exactly. There are other studios. I'm talking about all of them. This is the world, Dan, right here. From now on, I keep the doors locked with drapes over the windows. I don't want any of the outside coming in. Not the Marty Sauls or the movies without sentiment or, or those teenaged actors on television or rap music or any of it. Barbie, whether you like it or not, that's the way it is. That's the way things are. What can you do, Barb? Shut your eyes? Say it doesn't exist because you can't see it? It doesn't have to exist. If I shut my eyes, it disappears. Yes, it does. I can wish it away. But that doesn't make sense. It makes sense to me. Perfect sense. And you know what else makes sense? As of right now, as of this minute, this is the old Hollywood. With all the charm and romance, with all the glamour. It's a carefree world again, Danny. Just like before, in this house. Barbie, none of that's true. It's nostalgic and nice, but it's not true. Are you listening to me? It's phony. Well, if I wish hard enough, it won't be phony. If I wish hard enough, Danny. Barbara, please. I'll give a party. Yes. Tell all of my friends, Danny. Tell them. Tell Paul Nader and Jerry Herndon and Steve Black. Oh, now there's a man for you. Tell them I'm still at the same address. And tell... Barbie! Them... Paul Nader's been dead for five years. Jerry Herndon lives in Chicago. Steve Black hasn't been around for, for 15 years. And if I could get to them, if I could, what kind of party can I invite them to here? Barbie. Barbie, this is a graveyard you're creating. A mausoleum. You understand? You're wishing for things that are dead. We'll see about that. about that. Mr. Molson, please. Uh, tell him it's Danny Weiss. Hey, Walt. Long time, huh? No, no, no. I, uh, I didn't go to the awards. Uh, congratulations, by the way. Heck of a picture. Yeah. Say, listen, Walt. Uh, I got an idea, and I wanted to run it by you first, but before I shop it around... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nobody. Nobody yet. Well, you know the actor who just won for Best Supporting? Uh-huh. Well, about time is right. Yeah, he's all over the talk shows, giving interviews left and right. <laughs> no, no, I don't represent him. But he's been in this business a long time, you know, started as a teenager. I know, at your studio. That's... That's why I'm calling. See, here's what I think's gonna happen. A brand new interest in the greats of our industry who made it what it is today. You know, I can I can see it coming. Not not nostalgia exactly, but a a wave of appreciation. Reevaluation. So so I was I was thinking, why not put together a special project just for them? Hmm? The ones who've been out of the limelight a few years. Stars who, who never got an Oscar but deserve to. Yeah, I tell you, the media, the media will lap it up. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I don't have a, a script yet. Uh-huh. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, oh, I'm a sci-fi fan, too. Mm, sure, sure I am. Yeah, so it makes... Mm-hmm. So make it like Star Wars meets, um, oh, I don't know, on Golden Pond or something. I'm, I'm just riffing now, but... Really? 
You never saw it? Oh, great flick. Eben Flander. No, Henry. Yeah. Yeah, a whole generation that... Well, they... They would if you set it up right. The what? Oh, oh. A series of pictures on... Uh-huh, based on... On video games, yeah, I see. Well, of, of course they have to be young. Still, when you, when you think what a great name could bring to the package, what? Well, Barbara Jean Trenton, for one. No, she's not dead. No, I assure you. A highlight's real. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't think she'd mind. Sure, sure, I understand. Well, give me a call when you get back in town, huh? Yeah, yeah, while well, looking for it. <laughs> All right, take care now. Yeah, you too. Hello, Mr. Weiss. Hello, Billy. Once again, huh? Park it nearby, would you? It won't be long. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Weiss. Table for two? Not today, Jimmy. I, uh, I don't need it, after all. Very good. I'll get your waiter. I don't have much of an appetite. Just, uh, just the bar. Of course. Hey, hi there, Mr. Weiss. Where's, uh... No, where's who, Rich? Well, <laughs> You'll excuse me saying so, but uh, the place has been buzzing. I heard you're bringing Barbara Jean Trenton for lunch. Some kind of a uh, celebration. Ah, oh, well, there's, uh, there's been a change of plans. Oh, well, <clears throat> the reason I mention it is... <laughs> I was going to ask her for an autograph. You think she'd have minded? I'll bring you an autographed 8x10. How's that? Would ya? Oh, that'd be great. Just a scotch and water for now, Rich. Coming up. Make it a double, will you? Sure, no problem. Mr. Herndon, telephone call for Mr. Herndon. Mr. Herndon, telephone call for Mr. Herndon. Oh, hold on. Did, did you say Herndon? Why, yes, sir. Well, that wouldn't be... No, forget it. Pardon? Why, it's, it's, it's not for a, a Jerry Herndon, by any chance. I wouldn't know, sir. No, I was just wondering. Jerry Herndon. Hmm, sounds familiar. Didn't he used to be in the movies, too? Sure did. A long time ago. Telephone for Mr. Herndon. Right here, son. Jerry? You can take it at the bar, sir. Thanks. Oh, and uh, this is for your trouble. Thank you. <laughs> I'd know that voice anyway. I, uh, I don't believe I've... Danny? Danny Weiss? What in the world are you... I just stopped in for a drink. Oh, same here. I couldn't forget this place like old times. Old times is right. What are you up to these days? Oh, still in the business. What else do I know how to do? <laughs> Listen, can I buy you a drink? Uh-uh. I'll buy you one. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Talk about a coincidence. I was just mentioning you to someone. Pull up a chair. Uh, you'd better take that call. Forget it. They'll call back. We've got a lot of catching up to do. Listen, Jerry, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, who's there? Only me, miss. What have you done? Very sorry, miss. I didn't see you sitting there. I must have tripped on the electrical cord. Shall I plug it back in? Thank you, no. I'll take care of it, Sally. And Sally. Yes, miss? I'm locking the door to this room. I don't want to see anyone. I understand, miss. Sorry.
Yes? It's Mr. Weiss. Oh, Mr. Weiss. Can I come in? Yes, sir. Miss Trandon? In there. How is she? I wish I could tell you, Mr. Weiss, but I hardly see her anymore. Sometimes her bed's not even slept in. What are you talking about? She's in that room all the time, day and night. And a couple of times when I've gone in, I tell you, Mr. Weiss, don't think I'm going out of my mind or anything. But I swear to you, I can't see her. Only her picture up on the screen. Well, none of that matters now. There'll be a gentleman over here in a little while. A Mr. Herndon. Jerry Herndon? The one who played opposite Miss Trenton? That's the one. He's in town on a business trip. I, I thought it might do her good. Take him into the den, will you, Sally, when he gets here? I will, but it won't do any good. She won't see him. I wouldn't be too sure. She won't. She doesn't talk to anyone, not even the phone. Just stays in that room looking at her old movies, running them over and over. I'm worried about her, Mr. Weiss. You don't know how worried. I'll go in and talk to her. Now, Mr. Herndon should be here any minute. Go away, Sally. I said go away. I don't want anything, and I don't want to see anyone. Barbie, it's me, Danny. Now, please let me in. Why should I? Please, Barbie, I, I got something to tell you. There. Are you satisfied? Barbie? What's the matter, Danny? Don't care for the merchandise? Looking a little worn? The merchandise is beautiful, as always. But it looks tired. Looks as if it hasn't slept in days. It needs some air and sun. Outdoors, on the tennis courts, or, or by that pool you never use. I have everything I need in here. I'm quite satisfied, thank you. Hail and farewell, Daniel. The door's the one you used when you came in? I have some good news. Oh, do you? What is it? Has my house been declared an historic monument? A friend's coming to see you. A friend? All my friends are dead, retired, or forgotten. You told me that yourself, in no uncertain terms. Oh, this one's very much alive, and he'd love to see you. Tell him I'm not receiving. It's Jerry Herndon. Jerry? Dan, you don't mean it. I do. <gasps> Where is he? What's happened to him? Nothing's happened to him, I promise you. You'll see for yourself. When? Any time now. I happened to run into him. I swear, by pure chance. He asked about you, wanted to know if he could see you. I took the liberty. Oh, you're such a dear. You've done well, Danny. Very well. Oh, by the way I look, I no makeup and these clothes. When's he coming? I have to dress. <laughs> I think you'll like you just fine if you're wearing sackcloth. But if it makes you feel better, go ahead. Stall for me. I need at least a few minutes. Oh, show him to the living room. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, after all this time. How is she? Really? I, I'm so sorry I haven't kept in touch. Uh, she's still Barbara. Same zest for life, same charm. Why, we just had a meeting at the old studio. Yeah, the day I ran into you, matter of fact. Well, not that same terrible head of production, I hope. Yep, Marty Saul, in the flesh. He's running the whole place now. And he hasn't changed one bit. Same chip on his shoulder. No kidding. Jerry, truth is, she's not well. Nothing serious, I hope. Now, she'll pull out of it, I'm sure, but make a fuss over her, if you would. Tell her, tell her how wonderful she looks. It would mean a great deal to her, Jerry. You can help, and, and that's something she needs right now. Well, sure, Dan. I'll, I'll do my best. Danny? Yeah, in here, Barbie. I heard you'd invited someone for a visit. Let me guess. Could it be... Hello, Barbara Jean. Who's... Jerry? Oh, no, but this can't be Jerry. Are you playing a trick on me again, Danny? Is that it? <sighs> Been a long time, huh? <laughs> a lot of water over the dam. Oh. Oh, well. Yes. 
Jerry's just in town for a few days uh, on business. I see. You're looking downright lovely, if I do say so. Isn't it odd the way we picture people as they were, never as they are? You haven't changed, Barbara Jean. Hardly at all. Well, I, I thought you'd be here on a white horse or in an officer's uniform. Why isn't that silly of me? I thought you'd be as I remembered you, Jerry. A young man. I was. Twenty, thirty years ago. And do you know I had a crazy idea? That we might even do a picture together again. <laughs> not much chance of that. He's not an actor anymore. No, I gave that up a long time ago. Went down the drain, along with my youth. You don't act anymore? What do you do? <laughs> it's not so bad. I run a chain of supermarkets outside of Chicago. A chain of supermarkets? In Chicago? Doing really well, in fact. More than I ever made in the picture business. You're joking. No, you're not. You're not joking at all. Barbie. See this photograph? This is the one I expected. This is the one I wanted to come see me. With that darling little mustache. <laughs> well, uh, I've still got one. Only it's gone white like the rest of my hair. <laughs> so you have. But you're not the one in the photograph, are you? He's dead. He's dead. Like all the others. Barbie. Honey. Go away, please. Both of you. Will you just... Go away. It was very nice to see you. Goodbye, Barbara. Goodbye, my dear. Take good care. Jerry. There you are, Jerry. How well you look. How young. How wonderfully young. There was an old man here a while ago. A tired, worn-out old man. And he said he was you. Can you believe it? Oh, Jerry. Jerry, I wish I could... I wish I could be where you are. I so wish I could, Jerry. Oh, how I wish. Miss Trenton? I brought you a little snack, Miss Trenton. Coffee and sandwiches. Wouldn't you like some? Miss Trenton, where are you? Jerry? Jerry, wait for me! I'm afraid this is goodbye, Sally. <gasps> no! Goodbye! Mr. Weiss, sir, I think you'd better come over here right away. What is it, Sally? You'd best see for yourself. Sally, I don't see anything. What's, uh, what's the big mystery? That's just it, Mr. Weiss. I don't see anything either. She's not here anymore. Was the projector running? It was. When was that? About an hour ago. Who shut it off? I did. Then I called you. Well, have you looked in her room? Maybe she's taken a nap. That's the first place I looked. Then I went to every room in the house, even the pool in the yard. She's not here. At least... At least not in the way you'd mean. You know how to work this thing? It's just that little switch there. Are you going to run it, Mr. Weiss? Yes, Sally. I'm going to run it. <sighs> Mr. Weiss, I can't stand to watch. I don't know what I'm going to see. Shh, quiet. All right, darlings, that's enough for now. Let's go outdoors. We'll finish our cocktails by the pool. Everyone go ahead. I'll be right with you as soon as I change out of these heels. 
What is this film, Mr. Weiss? Not one that I've ever seen. It's funny, it doesn't look like a set. Wait, wait, those, those French doors, I, I swear it's this room. This one right here, it, oh, it can't be. But it is, Mr. Weiss, it is. Look at that scarf. She bought it only last year, and those shoes? They're the ones she wore when Mr. Herndon came by. Barbie! Barbie, please! What? It's Danny. Please, don't do this. Danny? Oh, there you are. Care to join us? The old gang's here. We're going to have such a time, just like we used to. You know I can't do that. I, I can't just step into a movie screen. It isn't real. None of this is real. Well, then, goodbye, Danny. Be a dear, and hold on to my high heels for me, will you? I can't very well swim in them. Barbie, don't! Keep them to remember me by. Jerry! Where are you? Barbie, please. Over here by the bar. I just stopped to freshen my drink. Care for another one, Barbara? Oh, don't tempt me. Now we simply must go outside. Everyone's waiting. In that case, race you to the pool? You're on! <laughs> <laughs> Barbie, come back! Come back! Sally? These shoes by the French doors, you... You didn't drop them here, did you? No, Mr. Weiss. And this scarf on the patio? No. Oh, they must be Barbie's then. I, I guess I'll just have to, to hold on to them in case she comes back. Oh, Mr. Weiss, what are we going to do now? Well, the only thing we can do, wait. Meanwhile, here's a toast to you, Barbie. And to wishes to the ones that come true. To the wishes that come true. To the strange mystic strength of the human animal who walks that thin line between reality and the shadows and can sometimes make one merge with the other. To Miss Barbara Jean Trenton, movie queen of another era, and no longer of this one. May her star shine brightly in the twilight zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The 16mm Shrine starring Kathy Garver with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, David Darlow, Fernette Lebo, Doug James, Roger Walski, and Carl Amari. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Matt Sorrow, Tim Cerny, and Todd Beyer. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at 
TwilightZoneRadio.com. Doug James speaking.